All right, welcome to the book of Obadiah. All right, so Obadiah 1, and it says, The vision of Obadiah does say of the Adonai Yahuwah concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from Yahuwah, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us arise up against her in battle. Okay, now, Obadiah, you know, the name itself means servant of Yah, or um, could also possibly mean worshiper of Yah. Hallelujah. Um, now, this word, this vision that he received was concerning Edom. Edom means red. And in, in, in all actuality, um, Edom, Adam, and uh, Adon is actually all the same word. Uh, you know, and so, you know, Edom kind of speaks to the fleshly side of things, too. It, or it, it can also spiritually speak to the fleshly type, um, side of things, you know. But um, Edom, of course, is the brother of Yaakov, you know, who was surnamed Israel. You know, and so... This is a vision concerning him, you know, and it's not at all good. It really isn't. It's not at all good. It's speaking about their judgment. You know, Obadiah uh, 1, uh, verses 2 and 3. Can I first be to read Obadiah 1, verses 2 and 3? Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that hath and that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, um Behold I have made thee small among the heathen. You know, I want you to pay attention because you know this is you know, um, exemplary of what Yah will do when he's displeased with one. Whether it be you or anyone else. Amen. Mm -hmm. Says, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. You know, and then it goes on to say, the pride of their heart had deceived them, and they dwelleth in the clefts of the rock whose habitation is high. You know, and so he said, in his, and it said in his heart, who should bring me down to the ground? Now, the interesting thing is, like, this prophecy that was given to Ob Obadiah was also given to Jeremiah in large part. You know, and, you know, Jeremiah also received a word concerning Edom and the judgment of Edom. And it's, and it's pretty similar to what Yah told Obadiah, so he gave him a second, uh, gave Edom a second witness, so there's no excuse for him not to, you know, know what was going to happen. Um, let me have my next reader read Jeremiah 49, 14 through 16. I have heard a rumor from Yahuwah, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together, and come against her, and rise up to the battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee in the pride of thine heart. O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock that holdest the height of the hill. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, says Jehudah. Hallelujah. Pretty similar, right? You know, um, pretty similar messages. You know, uh, almost verbatim. You know, now the thing that I, I want to call your attention to is it says that they um, dwellers in the class of the rock, you know, and um, one says whose habitation is high and the other one said that holds the height of the hill. You know, now the thing is, is you know, the, um, to really, you know, get the fullness of this, you need to understand what a rock is, spiritually speaking. You know, because they were dwelling in the clefts of the rock. They was 
looking to the rock for refuge, you know, to, to protect them, you know. But I want you to understand that rocks in Scripture speaks to God's. Psalms 180, um, Psalms 18.2, Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my Elohim, or God, and my strength, <coughs> in whom I will trust my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. You know, 2 Samuel 22 and 23, and he said, Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the Elohim of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. In Psalms 71, 3 and 4, be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually um, resort Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my Elohim, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel men. Cruel man. Yeah. So, you know, I want you yeah. to see that, you know, a lot of times when you read through scripture and you run and it's running to rock, you know, um, where they're talking about their rock, you know, oftentimes they're talking about another God, you know, and this is what this is what uh, Edom is being accused of, you know, mm -hmm. saying that you trust in the, in the clefts of the rock, mm -hmm. you, you know, but it wasn't the most high. It was a high rock, but it wasn't the highest rock. It wasn't the most high rock. It wasn't Yahuwah Elohim, you know, and so that was the problem. You know, so now that we know that taking refuge in the clefts of the rock speaks to Edom dwelling with and serving another God, it's also important to note that this... Um, rock of Edom is set on high. But who could he be? You know, uh, Edom dwelt in a place called Mount Seir. You know, and Seir actually, you know, speaks to a devil. And that's who his God was. And there's some, still a lot of people today that's still dwelling in Mount Seir. <coughs> That's still taking refuge in the wicked one. You know, so this is a message for them as well. You know, you know, Yahweh, uh, Jeremiah 49, 16, Thy terribleness has deceived thee, the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest be, make their nest, um, make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith Yahuwah. So Yah said he'll bring him down. Oh, yeah. You know, um, and if you if you recall, he was asking, who gonna bring him down? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, uh, seeing Obadiah 1 3, who shall bring me down to the ground? Mm -hmm. See, you don't wanna be uh, running off at the mouth because Yah right. hears everything. Right. You know, yeah. and here it is, he's answering in, 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 through Jeremiah. I will bring thee down from thence, saith yeah. Yahuwah. See, he's going to let his mouth get him in some trouble. You know, Obadiah 1 4. Thou, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. So, again, he's letting them know, you coming down. Mm -hmm. yes. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are hidden things sought up? You know, now, basically what Yah is saying, he's saying, hey, look, Edom, you know, if robbers would have came, they, they would have they got they, what they wanted and left, and grape gatherers would have came. They would have took uh they would have took a lot of the grapes, but they would have left some. Right, right. I'm not leaving you with nothing. <clears throat> you know, he letting them know, you know, he's not gonna leave them with anything. You know, even his hidden things will be will be sought up. You know, uh, it says, How are the things of Esau searched out? You know, it's interesting because, you know, it's been calling them Edom, now it's calling them Esau. Yeah. You know, and you know, this was another name for him. Esau means hairy. It means rough to handle. You know, because he was rough to handle and he was hairy. You know, and hairy speaks to your covering. You know, uh, 
Jeremiah 49, 9, you know, again, saying the same thing. If great, great, great gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaming grapes and thieves by night? They would destroy till they have enough. But I have made Esau bare. See, now, he was known for being hairy like an animal, you know, covered with hair. But Yah is saying, I'm going to make him bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. Obadiah 1.7, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, that they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. You know, so his own friends going to turn on him. You know, it, does, it sounds all bad for, for, uh, for Edom. Let me have my next reader read verses uh, 8 through 11 of Obadiah 1, please. Shall I not in that day, says the Yahuwah, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And your mighty men of Timon shall be dismayed, to the end that every one of the mount of Esau shall, may be cut off by slaughter. For your violence against your brother Jacob shall, uh, for your violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now there's there's some wordplay here. You know, I'm going to try to point it out to you. Uh, in, in verse 8, it says, uh, Shall I not in that day say of Yahuwah even destroy the wise men out of Edom? And understanding out of um, the Mount of Esau. Okay, now then it speaks about and thy mighty men, O Taman, shall be dismayed. Now Taman, which is one of the main cities of, of Edom, means south. Now south, you know, um, typify the the um, the light. You know, it, it typifies light because when the sun rises in the east it then heads south you know and so um and and light is a symbol for for wisdom you know for understanding you know and so this is this is uh what he's talking about it's, it's just a little word play he's saying you know he's going to destroy the wise men out of Edom, you know and thy mighty men o taman is he is uh kind of pointing out that they were mighty because they had the light because they were wise you know, but he's saying they're going to be dismayed. You know, this word dismayed is cut off. You know, number 2865 in the Strong's, it means to be shattered, broken, to be afraid. You know, so their mighty men, the ones who known for courage, are going to be scared. Mm. You know, they're going to be shattered, they're going to be broken. You know, um, and it says Esau is going to be cut off by slaughter. Now, Jeremiah 49. You know, also speaks concerning tainment. Says concerning Edom, thus saith Yahuwah Yahuwah of hosts, is wisdom no more in tainment? Is wisdom no more in the south where the light is? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their is their wisdom banished? You know, and of course, it has it has um, vanished. You know, but why has Yah chose to put such judgment? upon Edom. What did they do that was so bad? You know, and this is a this is a good lesson in this because, you know, there's an awful lot of sibling rivalries. You know, and that that goes on in, in the world. And Jacob and Esau they they have a famous sibling rivalry. You know, but Yah does care how you treat your brother. You know, and the reason that Edom has to endure such harsh judgment is because of the way they treated their brother. You know, their, their brother um, ja Yaakov or, or Israel says in 110, for thy violence against, against thy brother 
Yaakov, shame shall cover thee because of your, for your violence against your brother, shame shall cover thee. And thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. So they came up against their own brother. They came up against their own brother to help, help their own brother um, be destroyed. Psalms 137, 7 records some of what happened during that time. It says, Remember, O Yahuwah, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. So while they were coming in and they was, they was de um, destroying them, you know, they was rooting them on, telling them, you know, hey, tear it, tear it down even to the foundation. You know, but that was their brother. Verses 12 through 16, it continues on. It says, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother. In that day, he, he became a stranger. So when he became estranged from Yah, you know, if your brother going through something, you know, you don't have to partake in it. You don't have to go over there and see what's going on when you know what's going on is not good. Especially if you don't have intent, intentions of helping. And you don't need to go over there just to see. Just to see them go through ridicule and persecution. That's your brother. That's, you know, or your sister. You shouldn't do that. You know, so this is what Yah was up, upset about because he said, Thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in that day when he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Yahudah in the day of their destruction. You shouldn't be happy because your brother or your sister fell. You should get no joy from that. Goes on to say, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. And if they are getting destroyed, not only should you not rejoice in it, you shouldn't have anything to say about it. Mm. You know, and I know a whole, whole lot of folks, be, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they got everything they deserve. They deserved it. Mm -hmm. You know, should, more than that should have happened to them. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the thing you want to say mm -hmm. because y'all is listening. You know, he said that neither should as thou have spoken proudly in the day of, of distress. He continues on in verse 13. He says, thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. You know, another thing, you knew they was my people. And you're going to enter in during the day of their calamity. You add insult to injury. Mm -hmm. Not only is you watching your brother go through, go through his uh, uh, worst time. You know, not only are you rejoicing over it, not only are you speaking proudly about it, but you even done entered into, in, into his house. Continues on, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity. So you want to go over there and you want to see what's happening firsthand. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Now here it is, they, got, they have a problem you know, it's the day of their calamity. It's the worst day that they of their life, or maybe the last day of their life. And here it is, you in there um, putting your hands on their substance. How cold is that? Verse 14. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Now here it is, some of them trying to escape, and you standing in the way making sure they get caught. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of, of his that did remain in the day of distress. The ones that did, did get away, you caught them and then took them to their captors. Yeah, this your own, this your own sibling that's doing this. Verse 15, for the day of Yahuwah is near upon all the heathen. See, I want you to know, it's not just for Edom. All the heathen got a day coming called the day of Yahuwah. And I'm going to tell you, those of us that's living here today, those of us here right now, we closer to the day of Yahuwah than any other people that ever lived on the face of the earth. 
That's the absolute truth. Those of us who will be around tomorrow will be even closer. Verse 16. Oh, well, I don't know if I finished 15. For the day of Yahoo is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. That's why you want to treat people the way you want to be treated. Because if you don't, your reward will be turned on your own head. You know, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Verse 16, for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Mm -hmm. You know, so one should look on their brother's judgment. You know, shouldn't look on their affliction in the day of their calamity. One shouldn't rejoice in their brother's destruction and definitely don't use it as an opportunity to put put hands on their things. One shouldn't speak proudly during the time of their brother's distress and definitely shouldn't help their enemies. And one shouldn't enter into their brother's place during their calamity. You know, this is something that the Most High took exception to. Amos 1, 11, and 12 also prophesies of, of Edom's destruction. It says, Thus saith Yahuwah, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. How you going to sit up and ask to be forgiven when you don't want to forgive? How you going to be sitting around, you know, praying for mercy, mercy and asking for mercy and you don't want to be merciful? Some folks need to think about this. You know, because Yah says, it shall be done unto thee as thou hast done. Amos 1.12, but I will send fire upon Taman, which shall devour the palaces of Bezor, Bozrah. You know, and Taman again means south. You know, so speaking about destroying their wisdom. And Bozra speaks to a, a flock of sheep. They're going to be destroyed. Now, Amos has a warning for all those who, you know, have... In their head, you know, well, when is the day of Yahuwah coming? You know, I pray it hurry, hurry up and get here. You know, I'll be glad, you know, when this thing is, is over. That's not the way you want to think. Because the day of Yahuwah is coming, and we're closer today than we've ever been, than anyone has ever been. But I want you to understand how this day is going to be. You know, so, lest you find yourselves, you know, one of those that's wishing for it, wishing and praying that it hurry up and come. Amos 5, 18 through 26 says, Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahuwah. You should stop worrying about when it's going to come right there. He says, Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahuwah. To what end is it for you? You don't know where you stand. The day of Yahuwah is darkness and not light. It's you, you think you understand it. You're not going to understand it when it get here. It's, it's, it's darkness. It's not light. It's not going to shed no light for you. As if a man did flee from a lion in a bear meadow. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall in a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of Yahuwah be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat um, beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. For I will not hear the melody of, your, of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters. This is what Yah wants from us. 
Let judgment, righteous judgment run down his waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. This is what Yah wants. You want to please him? He want, he's concerned with righteousness. Have ye offered me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of Moloch hmm. and Kiyum, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Hmm. See, and the thing that, the sad part about it is a lot of people are still making gods unto themselves. What they, what they perceive as God, what they perceive as the most high, their perception of how this thing works is far from what scripture teaches. And they don't realize that they've actually made themselves their own God. You know, and they're worshiping something totally different than the people that's in the book worship. That's a real important lesson to learn. See, because the Most High, you know, he kind of like, you know, if I was to liken it into like the fast food restaurants, you know, he kind of like McDonald's. You know, you go to McDonald's, you want a Big Mac, you're going to get two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese on a sesame seed bun. You go to Burger King, you can have it your way. See, y'all won't let you have it your way. If you don't want what come on the Big Mac, then you need to go somewhere else. He's an L of specificity. You can't do it your way. You can't worship him your own way. You can't praise him your own way. You can't serve him your own way. You can't do nothing in conjunction with him your own way. Because if you do, you're not doing it unto him. He's not going to accept it. Yeah, but there's a God out there who will accept it. It's a God out there who will, and he will reward you for worshiping him. See, and that's something that a lot of people don't get. But you got to get it through your head that there's a God in this world. And so many people had this thing just misconstrued and, 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 and behind backwards. They think just because they have you know, material possessions or they got a few chips in the bank mm. that they blessed. Mm. That's right. mm. But that's not the blessings that the Messiah was talking about. He said, blessed out of meek. Yes. Blessed out of humble. Yes. Blessed out of those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Yes. Those are the type of things I heard him talking about, you know, people being blessed for. See, but, you know, people think that they're super blessed because they got super material wealth or, or what have you. But when I saw the account of how Satan tempted my Messiah, Yahshua, it said he took him up on a pinnacle and he showed him all the riches of the world. Showed him all the kingdoms of the world and everything and all the glory of them, meaning their riches, their gold, their silver, and everything that they had to offer. Everything that the world had to offer. This was the temptation that he tempted our Messiah with. And he told him, I'd give it all to you if you just bow down and worship me. Well, I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of folks bowing down and worshiping him, and he didn't even give it all to him. He gave them some of it. See, but the point that I'm trying to make is that that's, a lot of that stuff come from him. He's still tempting people in the same way. Yeah. He know you want a new car. He know you want a new house. He know you want money in your pocket. New clothes. And he, he want to see just how far will you go to get it. Will you jump off that pinnacle? Will you bow down and worship him? He'll give it to you. You can get it. All you got to do is serve him. And I'm here to tell you, there's a whole lot of folks serving him. And don't realize they serving him. They serving him, but they calling him Yah. They serving him, but they calling him God. They serving him, they calling him Jesus. They serving him, they calling him Jehovah. 
But I'm here to tell you, if you're not serving him the way that his words say serve him, then you're not serving him. You're serving somebody, but you're not serving him. See, because there's only one way you can serve him, and that is the way he prescribed. And any other way, he's going to tell you the same as he's telling these people in Amos. I hate. I despise your feast days. Think just because you're doing the feast that, that, that it's all good? Mm -mm. He said, I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings, though you dedicate your whole life to him and your meat offerings and, and you do all these wonderful works, you know, to try to please him. He said, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard your peace offerings or of your fat of beasts. Just because you're trying to make up, you know, so you want to do a fast or you, you want to make up, you want to try to do something nice to win favor from him. Mm. He's like, nah, I ain't trying to hear it. I, I, you know, go on. Go on away from me with that. Take away the noise of thy songs, too. You know, I, you know that's just, no songs, just, that's just noise to me. I won't hear the melody of your vows. You know, yeah, you play that instrument beautifully, but it's, you know, I don't want to hear that. Not until you let thy judgment run down as waters. Not until your righteousness flow as a mighty stream. Then, I hear you, then I'll accept your sacrifices and offerings. See, people don't realize that they don't set up, they don't made themselves their own gods and they're serving something totally different than the Elohim of Abraham, Yisak, and, and Yaakov. And that's the sad part. Because when this day of Yahuwah come, they're going to see what, it, what end it is for them. You know, so, you know, I want to encourage everyone to try to get on track now. Try to get on track now. Find out what his righteousness really is. You know, he done, he done went through all the trouble to make sure that you have scripture. Mm -hmm. Don't you know just the fact that you have the copy of, a copy of scripture, that that's a miracle in and of itself? Right. We talking about information that was entrusted to just a one small group of people you know, and at one time it was prized so highly that people would sell their whole life, um, would turn in their whole life savings just to get a copy. Now you can get it just about anywhere. And it's taken for granted. See, but don't you know just the fact that you are able to have a copy of the scriptures is a part of the miracle that our Messiah, Yahshua, came to do for you? Doesn't Yonkin 9, John 1, 1 say in the beginning was the word, the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim? Don't you know he's the word? Don't you know he came so that he can be made available unto you? He took the word out of that small group of uh, men's hands and spread it to the whole world. That's a miracle in and of itself. Not to mention that it's been around for thousands of years. How many things you know that's, that's still around after thousands, thousands of years? That's a miracle. And most people take it for granted. They, they make sure they have a copy, but they just won't open it. And if they open it, they won't read it. And if they read it, they won't take heed to it. Folks, we're going to be without excuse. Especially those of us in this country, because we're not even being persecuted for having it. So, you know, I encourage you, get in your word. If it say it, do it. If you can't do it, try to do it. You know, the only thing to beat a failure is a try. Obadiah 117, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness, and the house of Yahweh shall possess their possessions. That's where we want to be. Hallelujah. Mount Zion. Yes. What is Zion? Zion is 
Number 6725 in the Strong's, it speaks to a parched place, hence a desert. You know, I, I always try to try to tell folks that, you know, Yahshua is the prophet like under Moshe, and just like under Moshe, um, everything that Moshe did, our Messiah Yahshua did, including leading the people of Elohim out of Egypt. Yeah, our Messiah did that too. But where did he lead them to? Into a desert. Even as Moshe led him into a desert, so did our Messiah Yahshua lead us into a desert. You know, and that desert is Zion. You know, it speaks to a signpost, a way marker, a guiding pillar. It speaks to conspicuousness. That is something that's easily easy to notice, something that's obvious, that's attracting attention by being unusual or remarkable. Remember that passage that said that we're supposed to be a peculiar people? Well, that makes you stand out. That makes you unusual. But at the same time, you'll become remarkable. See, people that knew me back in the day, they probably thought I done went crazy. But I tell them, no, I just done went righteous. You know. Like, you walking around, you got strings hanging off your clothes. No, nah, they, they not call strings. They call ZCs. They found in Numbers 15, verse 38. I'm wearing them because my L, my God. I don't know what your God said, but my God said for me to wear them. So that's why I'm wearing them. I know it may seem peculiar. I know it may make me stand out. You know, it may it may make me uh, unusual, but that's okay. I'm willing to be that. That's right. Because I know who I'm serving. I know who I am, and I know whose I am. But at least I can tell you why I'm walking around with strings hanging from my pants. Can you tell me why you do the things you do? Can you show me in scripture where it is that support the things that you do? Can't do it, can you? But I can. That's because like my Messiah, I come in the volume of the book. I'm trying to be like him. Because I understand like father, like son. You know, and if you acting like the other father, then you just might be one of the other sons. I'm just saying. It says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. What is holiness? Well, you, you don't know without scripture. Because scripture is what teaches you to be holy. And you can't be holy without doing scripture. Because that's what defines it. it. Speaks about the house of Yaakov, the house of the heel catcher, the supplanter. See, don't you know just, just how Yaakov supplanted Esau and got all got his blessing and got the birthright? You know, those of us that are in the Messiah, we're gonna supplant the world. We're gonna get all their goodies too. You know, this is why you read in scripture, you know, the wealth of the, uh, of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Just a matter of time. Verse 18, and the house of Yaakov shall be a fire, and the house of Yosef a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahuwah have spoken it. Remember how he said he was going to, the same thing that they did was going to happen to them? How they came up against them in their time of trouble? Well, he's going to cause the house of Yaakov to consume Esau in their time of trouble. Verse 19, and they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Verse 20, and the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that which is of the Canaanites, even unto Zareth, 
5, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is Shepharad, shall possess the cities of the south, and the and saviors shall come on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be Yahuwah's. That's going to be a wondrous time. The saviors, I thought it was only one savior. Right there, it say the saviors. Is that is that an S on the end of that? Yeah. Right. As the saviors shall come on Mount Zion. Who in the world could he be talking about? Revelation 14, 1, and I, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads, and I heard a voice from heaven. As the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Where did he go? He went to the torture stake, did he not? Say lie. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Elohim to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of Elohim. That's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing. Yeah.